drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi friends welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world this unit we are discussing about different mechanical properties we have already seen the tensile property the stress strain relation today we will discuss about the hardness test now how do we define hardness hardness is basically a measure of materials resistance to localized plastic deformation what do i mean this means is that if you have a material and if you try to apply a load at a very small location at a very pinpoint location then the resistance of the material to any plastic transformation on this pinpoint localized region is known as hardness resistance to any plastic deformation in that region okay now we understand what hardness is but uh, how do we measure it what does it mean okay so initially in the past what happened was that hardness used to be measured qualitatively what does that mean that means that we had something known as mohs scale mohs scale had different materials beginning from very soft material okay marked at 1 like talc powder at unit distances 2 3 up till 10 we had different materials with increasing hardness okay 10 was diamond now suppose we took any material let's say material x and material x was found such that it scratched the surface of material 4 of uh, material with hardness more scale 4 but it was scratched by that of mohs scale 5 hardness that meant that material x had a hardness in mohs scale between 4 and 5 so this was a qualitative measurement right you compare the scratching capability of two materials and say which one is harder than which material to begin with you define 10 materials and provide a uh, hardness level to each of them and compare a new material with those materials and see where the new material fits thereby you give a rating 9 was silicon carbide so this way there were different materials this was more skill and this was more of a qualitative approach okay there was no specific science it was more of a comparison more of a trial and error kind of thing but recently not recently it has been quite a while that quantitative measurements has been done now what exactly was the quantitative measurement that was done the, for the quantitative measurement what was done was there were special indenters made indenters with specific dimensions which were internationally recognized and it was decided on specific amount of load and the rate of application of load under those conditions the specially designed indenter was forced into the material whose hardness was to be measured okay and we'll see the different kind of indenters that are available we'll see the specific loads that are used so under this specific conditions of a given indenter at specific load and specific rate of application you find out what is the dimension of the indent that is created in the material now if the material is soft then the dimension of the indent that is created will be large because the indenter will uh, be penetrated further deep thereby larger indent will be created if the material is hard then smaller indent will be created thereby by measuring the dimension of the indent created we can give it a particular hardness value the dimension of the indent created is converted into hardness values using specific formulas that has been derived experimentally so let us see softer material as i said will have larger indent and vice versa 
Now what is the importance of hardness test? Why is hardness test so important? What you will see is hardness results, hardness of a material is reported in almost all the studies that is carried out. Why so? Because it is very very simple test and it is quite inexpensive test. But more so it is a non-destructive test. In the tensile testing what you saw was you took a specimen, you pulled it, pulled it till it ultimately failed. So you are actually destroying your material, destroying your sample. But in hardness test, you are just creating a very small indent in the specimen and getting a result of a hardness. Therefore, it is a non-destructive test. And hardness can be related with other properties. It has found to have good relation with other properties like tensile properties of the material. Therefore, hardness is a good indicator of the general mechanical properties of a material. So hardness is actually one of the most common tests that is carried out aforementioned reasons. Now hardness tests are mainly of four types. Different hardness tests are mainly of four types. One is known as Weaker's hardness test. Then we have what is known as Rockwell, Brinell and Nope. We'll see each of them in details. What is the differences between them? under what condition which hardness test is used let us see that let's start with Brinell okay so Brinell is a hardness test in which we use a spherical indenter the spherical indenter is a 10 millimeter sphere of either steel or tungsten carbide so what this means is we have a spherical indenter which is very very hard this is the indenter which is 10 millimeter across now this is the view this is the surface of the material in which indent is being done so if the material is very hard the amount of indent being created will be less if the material is quite soft then the amount of indent created will be much larger so what we can have is either something like this or something like this this is hard material this is soft material comparatively so by measuring this dimension the radius of the indent that is created or the diameter of the indent that is created we have generated a formula in which we have the value of load obviously more the load you will apply more will the indent go inside and more will the dimension so you need to fix the load or in order not to uh, worry about the load here we have already put the load in the formula then this is 10 millimeter basically and this is the amount of indent the dimension of the indent so more the indent this whole value will be less okay so as we see Brinell has spherical indent there next let's see what is Weaker's hardness Weaker's hardness uses diamond pyramid indenter what is diamond pyramid indenter that means the material of which the indenter is made is of diamond and the shape of the indenter is pyramid exactly how pyramid the indenter is such that the angle between this surface and this surface is 136 degree 136 degree this dimension and 136 degree between the other two faces too. So the intent that will be created by a weaker micro hardness tester will be more or less a square in shape. Okay, this is going in so it will create a square in shape. This square, this is the type of indent that will get, will have two dimension, one diagonal and other diagonal. Let's say one diagonal is D1 and the other diagonal is D2. What I will do, this two D1 and D2 will be very very close but it might not be the same value. So we will just take out the average, we will get D is equal to D1 plus D2 upon 2 and we plug that inside HV, HV stands for weaker, here HB stood for Brinell, hardness Brinell, hardness weaker and this is the formula 
you need not remember this these are standard formulas you can find out by a simple google so but the point to note here is again we have the load applied at the top and the dimension of the indent created at the bottom so larger the indent lower will be hv smaller the indent higher will be hv logically that is what should happen because larger indent means softer material means hv should be small smaller indent means harder material means hv should be large okay now that we have seen brindle and weaker's hardness let's see noob's micro hardness weaker's can be hardness or micro hardness depending on how large the load we are applying if the specimen is very fragile we apply a very small load 1 gram 2 gram if the material is quite tough like steel we can apply uh, 500 grams or 1 kg so at that time we don't really call it micro hardness we call it weaker's hardness whereas noob's hardness is normally taken for material which are very thin like suppose you have a steel in which you have a layer of nitro carburization or you have carburized it and you want to measure the hardness profile so what happens in carburization is that basically carbon diffuses through the surface and the outermost layer will be very hard as you go in the hardness keeps on reducing so if you want to profile the hardness with depth if you use the standard hardness measurement techniques then you cannot profile it really right because that will create a big indent you are not really profiling it but no hardness tester what they have done is that they have created again a diamond again a pyramid but the dimension of the pyramid is such that one of the diagonal will be seven times the other diagonal okay so the length if it is 7 mm the width will be just 1 mm thereby what you can do is that the indent you can take like this thereby you can get several indents very close by because this dimension is much lesser okay and that is what noob hardness tester does it's mainly used for profiling if there is a different surface or if there is nitro carburizing carbon nitriding those kind of things okay and again here what you see is similar to the weaker hardness formula here too you have a constant something load divided by the length square you have taken so this gives you noob's hardness noob's micro hardness rather and finally what we have is one of the oldest techniques which is known as the rockwell rockwell hardness test Rockwell hardness test has a diamond cone it does not have a pyramid it does not have a sphere it has more of a conical shape okay the conical shape and the diamond material the cone will also pro produce a circular indent indentation if you think about it if you have a cone it will pro produce a circular indentation so here too you basically measure the meter of the indent and we have charts based on which you see what dimension corresponds to what hardness okay now for rockwell hardness the the thing is that you have some standard dimension of the diamond cone it's 1 16th 1 8th 1 4th 1 second of an inch in diameter diamond cone or a steel sphere is also used right so for diamond cone also you have a spherical indent a rather circular indent and steel spear also you have a circular indent now the loads that are used in rockwell hardness are quite high for rockwell you have 60 100 or 150 kg standard for superficial rockwell you have 15 30 or 45 kg using this values you need to keep in mind that uh, you while predicting the hardness looking for the hardness for, from the standard charts you use the right combination of the dimension and the weight used for hardness measurement okay so these four are the most basic type of hardness measurement quantitative measurements brinell wickers 
Noob and Rockwell. Okay. And uh, there are certain empirical relations between the how to convert one hardness measurement into other hardness measurement. I'm not going to go into the depth of them. The idea of today's lecture was to give you an idea about what hardness is, how to measure it and what are the standards in the industry that is available for hardness measurement. If you want to study in further details the, the whole idea about the whole set of lectures about mechanical properties is in fact in itself a complete coursework. So I'm not going to go into the details of each and every one of them. Fine. With this I'll bring to close today's lecture on hardness. Next lecture we'll see the idea of fatigue. That is what is uh, the effect of cyclic loading on a material. Till the next class. Have a great day. Goodbye.